Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, uh, we have the rear fuselage kind of put together. Uh, we've got some interesting things to talk about uh, in today's video. Um, we're gonna show some clips of uh, some of the things we found as we've done some assembly. And uh, I'll also uh, talk about some of the issues that we've run across as well uh, in the last couple of days. So uh, interesting stuff coming up for you. All right, well, let's take a look at the documentation. The, the first thing you see, uh, what is this thing? So um, Sling has uh, done a modification uh, to the way heat comes uh, to the aircraft uh, cabin, of course. So um, this guy is um, an exhaust-based heater that uh, gets mounted on the the firewall itself. So this design is new. Uh, so are some of the vent components. They've changed those as well. So uh, these directions are actually brand new and uh, they, they feature some exciting stuff. But uh, one of the things that they did do inside the cabin is they, um, this is the NACA duct coming from the outside. Uh, they have uh, put in a, um, a servo basically to close off that duct, uh, which is uh, an improvement uh, because there's some people who've been doing mods on this front. So that's new, that we like. Um, this uh, octopus thing, <laughs> that, is, um, that is new. There used to be a, uh, a heater based on, uh, that, that took the coolant from the engine, right? And put it into a coil and a blower here that that all got removed now uh when we talked to sling about this uh sling had said um removing that heater core uh was actually an improvement as well because obviously once you get it in here and you rivet uh the top on uh very hard to get behind here and uh basically get to that heater core so having nothing electronic back here that can fail is technically a win um, for us. Now, uh, getting the uh, heat from the engine, that's something else. And I don't think I have the picture of that here, but it's basically um, the, the way the heat comes from the engine at the end of the day. Um, there's an exhaust shroud that gets bolted onto the engine and then it gets ducted over here to the outside of the firewall and then it comes in to the inside where it goes in now all of this is air pressure that's driven by the prop there's no fan motors or anything in there um this is how the uh high wing has the design as well coming out so uh this is new for the tsi also for the tsi this is the Behringer uh, pitch throttle quadrant. And you notice there's uh, the, the throttle, the pitch, the brake, and the parking brake. Yeah, that is uh, the prop control right there going to the prop governor. So that is um, interesting and uh, it is also cool. Now, some people have put a uh, manual prop control basically on the instrument panel. Well, this, this moves it to the throttle quadrant, which is nice. And uh, it gives you a, a manual option versus the auto. Um, so first Airmaster versus MT versus the Duke propeller. Um, so those, uh, those are kind of nice and uh we'll have a surprise here uh, eventually as well now parts so obviously i have my trusty packing list uh inventory list right uh, i have a problem and uh so not only did i have a problem because i opened the fuselage box and i was like hey the heater is missing uh, what happened, that was not on the inventory list. We discovered it by 
breaching Sling Technical, I'm also missing components from uh, the luggage area, which says basically I'm missing the components from the luggage floor assembly. Uh, so I'm missing this um, uh, reinforcement channel um, and the uh, the surfboard and the and the bulkhead. So I'm missing uh, some substantial pieces of aluminum uh, that hopefully have to arrive sometime. Now, that's great. Here's, here's this guy, right? This is the, the rear skeleton. And it actually got pretty big, uh, pretty fast. Now, uh, I've done some work on it. Uh, I've got pieces that are, that are basically ready to rivet in place right now. Um, and I've got the skins sitting on my other crate, basically ready to go. And I've got, I got some parts hanging as well, but the bulkhead, not supposed to go, you know, in this area, uh, and, and the surfboard, the, the luggage floor missing. So, uh, I quickly looked through the manual and I, uh, I looked at the parts I had, and then I started making piles for what I had. And then I went back through my other piles to see what I had. And uh, we de determined that we have a problem. <laughs> but what's going to happen here, probably in the next couple days here, is I'm going to get this fusel uh, rear fuselage set up as much as I can with the skins on it. I'll, I'll run the control cables uh, and I'll run the, uh, the electrical to the tail. But then I'm going to throw these pieces basically into here and then put the rear fuselage over here, which is my, <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's the canopy in that crate. Uh, so uh, basically it's, it's going to go over here. And then we're going to start on other sections of the fuselage, which I do have. So we'll start in the center fuselage and uh, use the tables for that work while we wait. But obviously, like this thing, you can tell the rear fuselage is taking up uh, uh, a good chunk of my benches. And uh, just for you guys building in a garage, a uh, two-car garage, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is it. I, mean, I got my wings sitting over here, right? And I got I got that sitting over here and I have some floor space left, but that's it. All right, next, uh, I got parts laying here. And so I did take apart uh, part of my control sticks and I did that and you see they're, they're tagged. Uh, I want you to the other side because it's got some uh, information for me on it, but basically I got a bag full of parts and I got some seat parts as well sitting here and these are going to be going to powder coat. So yeah, um, I found a local guy, uh, he does powder coat. All I have to do is get him the powder coat colors that I want and I've got uh, uh, prismatic uh, powders basically, um, which have been really cool uh, to work with so far. And they've got a, a kind of, um, list of powders that I'm going to go with, but, uh, prismatic powders, uh, let me walk over there real quick. Uh, they, they can give you samples and all you have to do is pay for shipping. Right. And so, uh, kind of cool. Like, so here is, uh, a Behringer wheel, <laughs> but I found a pretty close color for them. And uh, it just happens to be Illusion Wild Copper. Um, and again, like it's it's gonna be close enough because this is gonna be uh, in the cockpit and I'm gonna use the powder coat on like, I don't know, the brake handle and that kind of stuff, right? So uh, I'll use this color on brake handle and probably the, uh, the seat handle and that kind of stuff so I don't have too many colors happening in there but um it's a cool kind of color and it, it you know prismatic tells you what you need to do on it and so it says hey you need to order pmb 
five three six four and by the way you need also the top coat which is the the glossy on top of that and so that's really nice um really nice uh the samples were free for everything and uh you know you get you get kind of your your choice on it now they also have you know the grippy stuff uh which one of them is splatter black and you kind of see there's texture on it and there's there's a couple like that you know they I found one that was super rough, and I was like, man, you can definitely see the texture on that guy. And that's uh, that's it's also called Super Grip Black, obviously for a good reason. Uh, but they have an intermediate one as well, which is uh, which is nice. But I grabbed some of the colors. Uh, maybe uh, this is an airplane color. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely bright enough for, uh, for something that the kids wanted to see on a plane. Uh, but I grabbed these, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So this is probably the one right here that the control sticks are gonna be again, which is that, that splatter black. And that'll give the control sticks just a little bit of grip, um, you know, as well, just to, just to have uh, as well. But uh, that's kind of the, the overall on that and the, the powder coat situation from there. Uh, you can also powder coat at home. Uh, you need an oven though, and you can usually find those, you know, on the side of the street somewhere you know like people dump dumping their ovens and obviously for most parts most parts are not that uh big to powder coat probably the control sticks are probably the longest but um the there's a couple of places that that even sell a you know basically a toaster oven that gets up to the 350 degrees to to 400 degrees that you need to really cause the powder coat to flow and you can buy the gun for like 99 bucks or something as well so it's really good in that regard uh could be done at home but um you know i found a guy and he's willing to do it and he has a bigger oven and uh it'll work and uh yeah kind of go from there so yeah that's uh so that's where we are basically um uh, one of the things i've also done here um is the instructions say you can zip tie uh, the longerons to uh, uh, to hold them in place. Really, I just got a Clico and um, a scrap piece of uh, of aluminum, right, and drilled a hole in the aluminum, a three point three millimeter drill, and uh, yeah, I'm holding them that way. Uh, that's doing the job really well, and uh, I've got. I don't know, uh, I don't know, seven, eight plates on each side right now holding them in place. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, let's take a look just at the way this is right now so you guys can take a quick quick peek at what's going on there. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Now, I will say in the instructions, uh, the manual reader really doesn't say anything about riveting this and the manual doesn't say anything really about riveting that but obviously you got to uh so as um uh, as you go you learn some things about uh how to construct this thing um and you get smarter as you go as well the other thing that uh, i learned and i've got a video on it so let me let me put that video here uh, as well, so um, we can talk about it a little bit more. But there's some interesting stuff ha happening on this side. All right, so here we are at the rear fuselage, right? And this is this is the assembly that's getting attached to the rear. And this is interesting, right? Because you already have this assembled as part of the instructions. So you already have this bracket on. You already have the longerons clipped in. And this one's riveted in already. But this big piece has to drop in and get in there. So how do you do it? Well, these uh, longerons, which I think are 901s, right? Um, remove the Clicos from them and then slide it into place, slide the assembly into place. And then Clico the um 
Pleco the ribs back, uh, the Longeron's back on. And you do that anyway because uh, these are going to be Clecoed in for a while because the skins get attached to them later on. Uh, so that's fine. But just right here, it's a little bit of a challenge at first to get it aligned. And so the way it ends up being is it ends up being the bottom skin and then the assembly frame and then the, uh, the Longeron that comes through kind of gets sandwiched between the whole thing. And uh, that's how it goes. I got to put a Clico in here for that one because the instructions don't have that as well. But uh, other than that, that is the, uh, basically the, the bottom of the rear fuselage uh, coming together. And uh, yeah, looks starting to look like the picture somewhat, right? Cool. All right, let's take a look at the way that this jig works. So you can tell there's a jig here for these rear fuselage uh, ribs. All right, and so we're gonna go right to rib five and we can see how it's laid out with the pieces. And there's left and right to these and the same thing with the brackets, left and right for those as well. So let's keep an eye on it. Let's go to the jig. I've got it set in the jig right now. And this is how it looks as of right now. Uh, if you mix up the sides, uh, it's, uh, the jig will not fit right. So that's a good indicator that you've done something wrong. And uh, yeah, there's, you can tell, there's just some, uh, some holes for the Clecos to go through, as you can tell by these other ones. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this assembly over now that it's aligned into the right spot and basically rivet all the holes that we can see that need to be done and uh, we will go free it from the jig and then do the last couple from that perspective. All right, let's get that done. We'll take a look at this rib five. All right, here's two more in the jig. Looks good. So this is the, the next two of the rib structures, which is uh, three and four sitting in there now. And uh, yeah, they're laying pretty easy. Uh, if you do get the orientation right, the holes will not line up and you'll find out uh, pretty quick how that's going. Uh, you do notice as well, the ribs and the instructions flip directions. So um, for one rib, they're reversed left and right and the other rib, they're right side left and right. And you see that in the instruction set, it has the front and rear. And uh, yeah, you can see right here, if I can focus on that. But uh, yeah, front and rear on those pieces. So that's just something to be careful of because that does change the orientation of the way you lay the parts in on the jig. All right, everyone. So this is the mount for the GMU. And there's nothing really exciting about it other than you notice it's uh, gonna be held together by riv nuts instead of rivets. And the reason for that is the GMLU-11 is a magnetometer. And um, the rivets are aluminum with the stainless steel, uh, well, with the, with the steel stem on them, right? So they're stainless, but the stem is, uh, is steel. So no to those, uh, you will find that the riv nuts are also special riv nuts. These riv nuts are aluminum. They are a different part number, so that's something to watch for. You can kind of see they're still aluminum uh, on the inside. You can see that with the with the sheen of them, but they're they're basically uh you know flat uh, silvery aluminum. Uh, they're separately packaged. There's eight of them in the kit, and you need all eight of them here. And then you'll use brass screws to put the plate together. So you'll get brass screws to put the plate together according to the instructions. And, um, and yeah, the magnetometer itself, you'll want to make sure you use brass screws for it. 
because uh, anything steel interferes with uh, with it. Um, if you buy brass screws off of uh, a unknown quantity place such as Amazon, um, run a magnet over it. Make sure the brass doesn't stick to or to the magnet. And uh, if you do, find other screws because you don't want um, you don't want that interference with your magnetometer. Um, that's also why um, uh, Sling moved the magnetometer location because it was it was basically right down here, um, and while that's super accessible, um, the rudder cables are right there, and those are stainless steel and could cause interference, especially perhaps in turbulence where a rudder cable might be bouncing a little bit and the magnetometer picks up on it. So the new location is higher up and over and that makes it uh, much less prone to interference. So that is the magnetometer. All right, so guys, that's where we are really for um, October. Um, now, uh, I'm making this video at the very last day of October because um, honestly, I've been working with Sling to try to figure out what to do next. Now, um, one of the things that came up was um, firewall. So as I started looking at the documentation, there was some interesting things happening on uh, the firewall itself. There's components that get mounted to it, obviously, uh, I just showed you the heater box, um, but things like the battery uh, box itself, there's a, a channel that reinforces that uh, battery box that has to get mounted. Uh, basically, it has to get riveted from the inside of the firewall to the, the front of the firewall. And some other pieces that I do not have in, the, in this fuselage kit. Now, um, uh, we're working on uh, having having further talks with Sling about the parts that need to go into the some of the kits to be successful with that kit because there are steps that are uh, prescribed that um, those parts are needed for to successfully mount the firewall, uh, the firewall um, insulation material and uh, do everything like that well before you put the engine mount on and get a rolling chassis going because uh, then it becomes more of a kind of like how do you get up in there to do some of the stuff and if you're putting the heater core together and you have to go back in and rivet something on the firewall uh, then all the octopus of the, the heater manifold system is now in your way also so it's not ideal and so what I've gone back to today uh, is um, I've, I've basically given in and I've told Sling at this point, order the firewall forward kit because I don't think I can be successful on everything that the fuselage needs without it. Now, kind of sucks uh, because now I'm in a waiting game for that kit. Uh, that is something... That once I get it ordered, obviously it has to has to get approved and go through the system, and I have to put some money for it. Uh, but once once that happens, I'm you know four, five, six months waiting for that uh, firewall forward kit, and I'm having to make a decision that I didn't want to make until uh, next summer either, uh, which I'm not too happy about. Is uh, I have to make the decision on what engine I'm putting in. And I've held that decision uh, because I was hoping for some good news from Rotex on a 915 uh, to maybe make my decision a little bit better versus a 916. Uh, obviously, you know, $10,000 difference. Uh, I'm just hoping that Rotex had potentially done something or coming out with something to do something a little bit better about TBO, something like that to make the 915 a little bit more entertaining. Uh, where I'm at, uh, it's already cold. I really don't need the power of a 916. Uh, I'm already 
won't say much about it. And I'm already getting a prop that has better performance um, and better climb performance. And so um, I'm feeling pretty good about a 915, but I'd feel better about it uh, had I gone through at least um, at least the spring. But at this point, it's going to slow me down. It's going to stop my build um, because the again the parts I need uh, for some of this stuff are going to be in the firewall forward kit, and uh, it's going to lock me into a decision. So uh, if you guys are following me, if you guys are ordering the same kit sequence, uh, I started with the, obviously the wing and the appendage kit, and I ordered those. Those were those are perfect. Those, those go together, uh, and there's nothing really out there that, that they kind of um, depend upon. A fuselage is a much more complex beast. Uh, <laughs> I wish, uh, if I look at it again, I would probably, on the fuselage side, order the fuselage the um, the landing gear um, and the firewall forward together um, because the instructions seem to allow for that as a better transition. Um, and then I would order the finishing canopy kit uh, along with the upholstery, uh, probably last in, in this case. So <sighs> lessons learned, maybe for the next build. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, is what it is. Build's still a lot of fun. Honestly, there's still a lot of work on the fuselage, um, that can be accomplished while I wait. Um, it is getting colder already, so I'm basically down to, um, a handful of weeks left before it gets too cold for me to prime. Um, you can tell there's some stuff hanging in there that I did today, um, but I have to be strategic going forward and prime um, what I can get away with uh, before uh, before it gets too cold and before I can uh, before that stops me. But uh, looking forward, uh, I probably have a good amount of time in November to get things done. Uh, I have a probably about two weeks worth of time in December. Um, and then my guess is January um, will probably be stopped, honestly, on the build. So uh, that'll allow, uh, hopefully by that time, the parts that I need, the, the bulkhead from the, the, <laughs> the bulkhead for the luggage, uh, all that stuff will come in. So maybe I can finish the, uh, the rear fuselage as well because, you know, I'll probably just have those skins all primed, ready to go. And then there's only two skins that I need to get done, basically, for priming. Uh, so maybe if it's warm enough, I can get the garage warm enough. Um, maybe I can get some uh, some painting in just for those. But I'm not going to be doing a big paint project in the, in the middle of winter at this point for Chicago. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get fuselage work done. We're going to get center fuselage work done, um, which means once that gets, uh, gets started, um, I don't know, people, a lot of people have said they spent a lot of time making sure those controls are very smooth. Uh, and so when those control stick, uh, surfaces come in, um, I'll start playing with them, see what they look like. And uh, hopefully, well, maybe not hopefully, but I'm sure it will take me some time to, uh, to make the control smooth as well. And, um, and yeah, that'll be, that'll be good because right now I have some time while I wait for, for parts again. But uh, this is what we do. Uh, <laughs> it's actually kind of good as well because, you know, I can do something else for a couple, couple days and, uh, and, uh, stop myself basically from pushing forward because as you can tell uh, I've had this fuselage for um, two weeks basically and uh, it's progressed pretty pretty quick um, I'm pretty happy with with that progress um, but if I continue at this pace uh, <laughs> I will have a rolling chassis 
uh, and needing an engine uh, in March, which um, I'm not really ready for. Um, so my, my thought process was more like be ready for an engine by the fall and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens when I get there. Uh, but things may progress faster than I hoped. But again, parts being parts, it'll slow me down, I'm sure. All right. Well, thank you all again. Thanks for uh, watching this series. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, starting the riveting here. Um, by the way, this... Uh, fuselage has like 6,000 rivets to, to do. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do that. Um, riv nuts as well. I have a bag of like 200 M4 sized riv nuts and I, I think I've done 12. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, with, with each one of those being epoxied, yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, thanks for watching again. Hope you enjoy the series. Like and subscribe below. And uh, if I find something exciting, if I magically get something big done, I'll, I'll share an update as well in November. All right. See you guys.